the elections are coming up and I can't vote, but it doesn't seem that there's any like viable candidates. So like, who should we vote for? What do you mean by a viable candidate? Well, I mean, the, the guy that's in now doesn't seem to be too promising if we keep him. Uh, the last guy that was in, no one was happy with him and the guy before that. Why do you say no one was happy with him? Bennett? You was happy with Bennett? Oh, you mean Bennett? No, yeah. I wasn't referring to Bennett. Okay, I thought so you were referring to uh, Netanyahu. Go on. And uh, the, guy, the guy before him, uh, people don't seem eager to let him back into office, so now what? Perhaps you should take that up with uh, one and a quarter million Israelis who are going to vote for him in three weeks' time. I mean, time. I don't have voting rights. I, ha I have no dog in the race. So no, no, just I'm just sta I'm stating for the fact, for, for the record, that your statements and your assumptions are incorrect. There are many people in this country who, rightly or wrongly, we can get, to get into that, like Netanyahu and will vote for him. <coughs> what, I can, what I can state with certainty is that uh, whatever one thinks about Netanyahu, I think it's plain that he would not have initiated and uh, agreed to the kind of inane agreement that Lapid and his crew have uh, cooked up with uh, Hezbollah, with Lebanon, which is the same thing. Um, that would ne simply would not have happened in exactly the same way that he wouldn't have come up with Oslo. Once he was presented with, a, with, with Oslo, with the fait accompli, then, then the question becomes, what do you do with it? And did he do the right thing or not? One can debate and discuss what have you, but, but he would not have come up with such a thing. He would not have, have, have agreed to such a thing if it, were, if it were up to him. And the same applies to this agreement. He was discussing these matters with the Lebanese for the last 10 years, I understand. And the argument was about, you know, 50-50, 40-60, or, or there was no argument at all, which is fine. No, or no agreement, which is fine. That's, a, that's better than a bad agreement, by, by all means. But it's very easy to, to come up with an agreement when you, uh, when you say, well we'll, well, well, we'll compromise, zero, 100. All right, that's, a, that's no problem. If I want to sell my car, and I want, let's just say, for argument's sake, 100 shekel for it. No one's willing to pay 100 shekel. So I have to come down in price, up 90, 80. Someone will probably uh, agree to buy it at 80 shekel, let's say. But if you really need to get rid of the car, you just have to advertise that it's free. Anyone who wants can come and take it. Zero shekel, and you, you'll be rid of it, right? It's not a great uh, act of statesmanship <laughs> to give everything away and claim that you have come up with a tremendous uh, agreement, which, of course, is not the case. It's the opposite. It's a disaster. Let's hope that it will not actually come to fruition, but who knows. I did not say to vote for the Likud, and I would not recommend voting for the Likud, frankly. Um, even though uh, I am technically a member of the Likud. I joined the Likud um, many years ago, something like, I don't recall any longer, 25 years ago, in order to support uh, Moshe Feiglin uh, with Maniguti Udit, which I thought was a uh, a reasonable option to promote and I never never um, ended that membership because I always figured that I can try in the primaries and vote for someone better than somebody else or less less just less harmful than someone else and that might be a good good idea also <coughs> I was stunned yesterday when I partook um, I, I participated in a extended family gathering which takes place uh, every so often on Holomweth also and a nephew of mine, a highly intelligent young man who has been through Shas, okay, serious guy, very uh, you would think ideologically motivated and would have the, the right ideas about most things I was stunned when he told me that uh, he happened, he's not going to be in the country, he told me on election days, so he won't be able to vote anyhow, but were he to be in the country, he would have voted for Shaked. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there and I can't believe what he's saying to me. I ask him why. And the arguments that, that he presented were, <coughs> to my mind, were irrational. They didn't, they didn't make any sense to me, at least. One of the things he mentioned was that uh, it's a, a terrible threat to, to the state of Israel 
to have this large Haredi population that uh, don't, don't study English, don't study mathematics, and this is uh, a tremendous threat to the State of Israel, greater than any possible damage that this agreement with Lebanon could, could cause, which is, to the best of my knowledge, uh, completely inaccurate. Uh, I said to him a couple of things on that point, and I think this also indicates that he, he like many people, have heard the same mantras and propaganda for so many years, anti-Haredi propaganda, uh, and, 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 and on the other hand, you could, I could say the same thing about anti-Netanyahu, anti-Bibi propaganda, right? There are a lot of people in this country who are going to vote for whatever it is they vote. It'll be for one reason. Their ideology is, can be summed up in three words. Rak lo Bibi. Anything but Netanyahu. For whatever reason. No one can they explain why. Is, is, are the people they're voting for in any way better? No. In fact, d demonstrably worse. But they've heard this, this kind of Shalom. Shalom. Come in. There's chairs over there, I believe. <coughs> so, um, where were we? Yes, people have been exposed for years to anti Netanyahu propaganda. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a Hasid of Netanyahu, not at all. But he, I think, is, is rational, and uh, I think he uh, he's experienced. And he, he would not have initiated the, the disastrous policies that we've witnessed over the last few decades. Oslo, uh, the unilateral withdrawal or fleeing from Aza, and... Uh, <coughs> and and now this is inane agreement. He would never never have initiated any of those things. Mainly, his policy is to do nothing or very little. Not because he doesn't want to do anything, because he knows that doing nothing is often the the best poss possible option. When you can't do anything better, then doing making sure that nothing changes is the best option. I think that's more or less how he sees things g generally, hoping there might be some opportunity that will present itself, that things will develop in a certain way, allowing him to actually do something else, try, so, try some positive uh, policy of his own, but that usually is stymied by others, as has been point, pointed out by many people. Uh, and I don't know for a fact for, uh, whether Netanyahu really wants to ch make uh, any serious changes and reforms to the judicial system. Today we're living in a, uh, a legal, so-called so legal, but actually a kind of mafia uh, run, run by the judiciary. This country is a dictatorship run by a handful of judges and, uh, and uh, attorneys. And um, to, some, to, to some extent it makes little difference who the, who the Prime Minister is. It's, it's so, the situation is so bad. Does Netanyahu really want to change that? I honestly don't know, but I do know that he at never, no point did he ever have 61 uh, hands in the Knesset who were for making any such reform. He never had that, uh, re never had that possibility, so he, he couldn't be actually put to the test. Because in his previous governments, that we had this imbecilic uh, individual, Moshe Kahlon, who uh, announced ahead of time that I will do nothing at all to in any way curtail the, the uh, powers of, of the Supreme Court, etc., etc. So, he just, he didn't have the votes. Will he have, the, if he wins this election, will he have the votes? I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, <coughs> it's not clear that he, it's not clear that he does not want to. I think it is clear that he couldn't, even if he did want to. Whether he really wants to, I don't know. We shall see. So people have been bamboozled and and uh, exposed to, uh, to propaganda for so long, anti Netanyahu, anti Haredim, that it's easy to sell them these 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 claims. In the case of any agreement to do with gas fields, we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars or more. That's not the, uh, those are not the figures regarding uh, the entering of this number or that number of Haredim into the workforce. And anyhow, that's an ongoing process. You, the, the thing to know about, about the Haredi world is that they cannot be forced 
into doing anything they don't want to do. They, they can and will, of their own volition over time, uh, make, make changes to, the, to, to things that, the way they, they, they do things. Trying to force the issue is not wise and doesn't work and has never worked. And having said that, I will add that <coughs> Torah Jews have to be completely in, in charge, in control of the educational system to which their children go. That, that claim and that, that uh, pillar of, 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 of their ideology is entirely correct. Anyway. The Haredi ideology. Yes. <clears throat> so having covered those topics, um, I don't really see that there's any option. What possible option is there? Except for one. Is it ideal? No. Not many things in this world are, are ideal, but uh, the, the list which is running... Of course, we have to understand the problem in Israeli politics is the is first of all the system itself. The system is unworkable, irrational, and uh, guaranteed to produce the, the kind of gridlock and and disaster res results that we that we all uh, are familiar with. So first of all, the system has to be entirely changed completely. There's no nowhere on earth where we have there is such a system in place, with the exception of Holland, and it doesn't work there either, by the way. Although well, they don't happen to have 30 parties, only have, you know, nine or something, but, they, but, uh, but it doesn't work there either. We have, there is a list which is uh, actually made up of three parties. What's called Tzinut Tatit, which I cannot say I'm all, I'm all enthused about, but uh, they're basically good people. They have a lot of, they all carry the, the, a certain amount of ideological baggage, much of which should be jettisoned, but uh, they're basically good people. Uh, certainly not the kind of people who are out to do the wrong thing. Uh, you have what's Mayudit, <coughs> which is an important and welcome addition to Tzinut Tatit, because Tzinut Tatit attracts and speaks to your classic Datil Omi, many Ashkenazi voters, and what's Mayudit speaks to and is able to reach out to many of your non-classic, non-regular, run-of-the-mill Tzionidati Sfaradi voters. And that's a very important uh, synergy that they've created. And you have the third edition, which happened only recently. And it's miraculous that Netanyahu was able to, to convince Rav Tal to go along with this. That's quite a miracle in itself, uh, that uh, Rav Tal's uh, Noam party which obviously wasn't going to get in by itself, agreed to join that list at number 11. And it looks like they're going to get more than 11 seats, which is good. Uh, and I agree with many of the things that all the various people there say. I also have other things perhaps they don't say, and some of them do say, but or would like to say, but cannot say. <laughs> and, and I always, also don't always say everything that I necessarily think in all situations, in all forums. I don't see how any reasonable person could imagine to vote for anybody else, frankly. The only other thing that could possibly uh, strike me as, as, as legitimate and understandable uh, would be to vote for uh, Agudat Yisrael. In other words, uh, whatever it is, it's Degel uh, Torah and Gat Yisrael together. Well, I do, want to address, I do want to address a couple of points with regards to, to voting for that, that party, the list which includes those three parties, Tzinut Tatit, Otzma Yudit, and Noam. Someone said to me recently, and I would not be surprised if there were one or two people present who, who would also be uh, similarly minded. Someone said to me, well, I, I can't possibly vote for, for that list because uh, this person, Smotrich, was, uh, was all for uh, um, compulsory vaccination. Uh, to, to which I respond, I, I understand that that claim completely, and I agree. But uh, there are other things in the world other than that question. It's not the only issue, and one has to look at the big picture. And many people are not not. Uh, 
not able for some reason to look at the, the big picture. And the big picture is also very, very problematic. Our situation is very, very dire. Much more than most people realize. <clears throat> let me be, let me be a, a prophet of doom for a moment and tell you what I think is likely to happen before too long. I think that we will get, be involved in a war which will be a very, very difficult uh, experience for this country, perhaps for our enemies as well. But uh, I think we will suffer tremendously because we have painted ourselves into a corner on many, many fields, in many ways. People who know these things, particularly uh, this uh, general Aluf called Brick is his name. What's his first name? Brick. Yehuda. Yehuda. Um, I think he tells it like it is. Most people don't. And he's not beholden to anybody. And he says, and I believe him, and this is what I feel intuitively, uh, that uh, the army is not at all uh, what it's made up to be and uh, I think we're in for some very difficult times so be prepared. Thank you Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.